Colors are the simplest ingredient that can make or break your interface. That's why I wanted to cover a few tips that can actually improve your interface fast. Now, firstly, one of the biggest mistakes I see that uh, a lot of people are making, there are actually two mistakes. One is that uh, you use plain colors as your background or as your text. So if we want to have this example, uh, we how do we actually pick shades? So you, the easy way is you pick your main color and following the HSB method, you can decrease the saturation or just, add just a little bit of it. And if you play around with the brightness, uh, you see that it actually is. So uh, I want to have like a super toned down color. I don't want to change the hue. So I know that the situation needs to be something like this. As you can see, it's just a subtle detail rather than what we had previously, rather than what we had previously, which is this. The second part of it is that you use pure black color as your for your text. Now you don't want to do that at all. Now, why do we want don't want? Because the black is a super high contrast color. The same goes for pure white. You often want to use shades of black. So if we follow the same progress, let's take this and we pick our blue. Uh, what do we want to do here? Maybe we don't want to increase the situation immediately, but we just want to increase the uh, decrease the brightness. So that way, uh, you still want to have a little bit of brightness to it. Have this, uh, maybe you can increase the situation a bit and moves. And then you have like shades of this black color that can actually, it doesn't, feel much, but it actually does a lot. Uh, the same goes for this one. Maybe we, cause like this is actual progress and maybe uh, this one is a shade of it, but rather than uh, keeping it the same, uh, what can we do is create grays from it. So here we can go to the other range of the spectrum, just add a little bit, and just slightly start increasing the brightness. And maybe you can add a little bit more shade of uh, saturation and you can even play with this. And that's why that's an easy way how you can create different shades of your uh, colors and actually make your blacks and whites a little bit more vibrant. Even if it's a little detail, it can go a long way because this will help you generate more palettes easily. The second thing is that a lot of people uh, use few, use your primary color um, as a fill, uh, so you don't choose it purposefully. So uh, in this scenario, we have one, two, three, four places where we have uh, this blue color. Now, um, I would imagine that only confirm needs to be like this. So let's start with this one. What we want to do is maybe we want to make it pure white. And again, uh, we grab this hex and paste here. And you can see it generates this depth to it. It even looks looks more clickable. But once you've done that, um, you need to figure out how do you make this uh, more uh, easy to, to see. So an easy way is like you can just drag it like this and make it uh, again. Maybe let's flip it like this. And this way it looks much better. You can even... Uh, play around with your accent colors. So uh, you can go and pick a, maybe a shade of purple or a shade of red if it's an important thing and try to keep the same hue. And the same way that you go here, if you paste, oops, if you paste your red, uh, that's the same pattern if you want to create different shades of it and actually to make it stand out. Or you can go the other route where you can just use white, uh, but you need to create some depth with it. So you need either a drop shadow, um, which we already have here that you can just go and reuse, um, that you can just copy and you can create easy depth like this. Uh, it really depends on what you want to do, but don't make the main call to action fight with, uh, with the other elements on the screen. like they should be complementary, not taking all the attention from it. The same way goes for uh, 
common cultural semantics. For example, if we have a graph like this, uh, your buttons shouldn't be red. So uh, let's pick this red color and buy now, maybe. I don't know. Oh, we shouldn't do that. Uh, it should be always your main button should be whatever uh, actions happen. So that way it will enforce what the user must do. Uh, so even, for example, if you're working on a trading app and the stocks are down, you don't want the buy to be uh, red because it's not common practice. And lastly, of course, uh, maybe it's not the last one, but not least, is that you use too many accent colors. So although here we want to use accent colors, um, for example, in something like this, we might not want to do that. Uh, so maybe like we want to change this button, like which is similar to the Spotify one. Um, then we want to make this background to be more contrasty with the others. So you can actually go and use this again, the same tactic that we did. So it's a little bit, uh, it's a little bit toned down and you can actually work with the same color and create different shades of it. It doesn't need to be super crazy, even if we just move this slightly and just improve the button, maybe even opacity, or you can add a stroke to it with the same color. You don't even, sometimes you don't even need a lot of colors to actually make your interface stand out and, and look good. But, uh, what all of this entails is that you need to add enough contrast to your colors. Uh, so in this case, how do we measure contrast? Now, there are multiple ways to do it, um, but the easiest way is just to use a plugin. Uh, so if I use Stark and we just go ahead and uh, click on contrast, you can easily see that, oh shit, my contrast passes. But if you actually uh, are more curious, you can do this and this and just see what color is this and just paste the color. And now if you do, um, if you do this and then if you do this and you see that it actually passes your contrast. So don't rely on your uh, contrast tools alone. Always make sure to test your colors separately uh, because this way it will you'll be sure that um, you have the contrast. And again, uh, you should aim for double A for almost all elements. That's uh, 4.91, I think it was. And then triple A is the best one, but it's not necessary for all elements to have triple A contrast. Lastly, the thing I wanted to show you is uh, using actually cool gradients. So, <coughs> sorry. So instead of uh, just having it like this, what if we uh, wanted to use a gradient? No, this is our main color, and I have a few that's noisy. Um, I want it to be like this. Now, what I'll do is I won't just go ahead and pick a green color because. I'm a maniac or what, or just something like this. I would want to keep it in the same vibe. So if this is my color, um, let's say I want this to be the starting point and I want this to be the ending point, uh, I will actually play maybe a little bit about with the hue and don't change it that much. And I want it to be relatively the same type of hue uh, or maybe slightly darker. Um, and just the gradients should be super subtle. They don't, they sh you shouldn't have any hard stops within your gradient. So don't go and pick like green and blue or um, uh, purple and red or purple and I don't know, uh, blue. Like try to manage those. And also don't go too crazy with your colors, um, with your gradients. You shouldn't really overdo them. Now, once I like this, um, I would maybe want to be like 5% and then I would like this to be 30% and boom, it just adds a little bit more depth to your interface. Uh, so gradients doesn't need always to be full win, but even if we do it like that, you can see if we pick a green color, 
how it changes the whole hue of the gradient itself. You can barely see it. Yeah, that was it. Uh, five or six or seven tips of how to be better with color.